Hi, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here in front of a 1915 uh, bungalow. This house is just coming up on its 100-year uh, anniversary. And uh, an architect that we really like, Nick Deaver, that we've worked with on past projects, is working with this client on uh, doing a whole house remodel on the inside. And part of that remodel is we're going to be uh, taking advantage of the sloping lot, in this case, where the, uh, from the front porch to the back of the house slopes greater than uh, eight feet. It's about a nine foot uh, drop. And so there is some basement space in there now, but we're not exactly sure how well that was done structurally. Uh, it looks like it was done in the 60s at some point. So I wanted to show you in this video uh, what we like to do ahead of time to try and find out and investigate what we've got with structure so that we can give the proper information to the structural engineer and to the architect uh, so we can make good decisions and give some good numbers in terms of some ballpark budget for this client. So let's go on the side of the house where I've got Ricky and Ramiro digging some uh, test holes and let's see what we're doing over here. As I mentioned, the uh, some remodel work was done, it looks like, in the 60s here. And they've added some foundation uh, work or some slab work at that point. But we're not sure how... Uh, how good it is. <laughs> so let's uh, let's come over here where these guys are starting to dig some test holes for me. Morning, guys. Morning. So Ricky and Ramirez are digging some test holes in this on this back section. We've got a uh, basically a some type of structural slab in the back here that was poured a long time ago. We don't believe there's any steel or rebar in this uh, in this concrete. And so these guys are going to dig down for us, and so we can get a, at least a shovel full or two underneath we can tell the exact thickness of the structure and give good information back to the uh, engineer. We're also going to do the same thing on the high side of the lot here where they've got a little more dug in the ground. So we'll come back in uh, an hour or two here when these guys have gotten it down and we'll see what we've got. And then I'm also going to go inside and cut a couple holes uh, in the structure inside so we can get our camera snake in there and see what uh, the floor joist system looks like and what some of the posts are. So let's uh, check back with these guys in a little bit and let's go inside and see what we've got for structure there. Okay, now we're inside the house. Uh, this is the basement portion that we believe was built out in the 60s. And we've cut a couple holes with the, uh, with the old drywall jab saw here. And uh, of course we try to do those in as inconspicuous places as we can. So we use this closet and uh, it looks like we've got two by 10 uh, joists here. This is about a 14 and a half foot span on this, on this portion of the house. There's a center beam, a 4x6 beam that runs right down the center of the house. And then they, uh, also 2x10 uh, joists on the other side. And those have a little, a little longer of a beam, about 15 and a half uh, foot span for those joists. And they're on two uh, foot center, so 24 inches on center. And if you can get in there, uh, you can actually see that they use some telephone poles, of all things. Uh, it looks like in the 60s to support the house. Uh, I'm sure they probably had cedar cedar posts in there that probably had some rot and some issues and, and likely had no concrete underneath them. So we don't know exactly if those telephone poles were just rammed in or whether those are uh, a support post. I'm assuming those were rammed into the earth. And then you've got a four, it looks like a four by six beam running across there that those two by tens are running on top of. So we'll have to talk to the structural engineer. My guess is that those two by tens are a little overspanned, and we're probably going to have to beef those up some. And um, we're not not exactly sure what we've got for footings yet. But let's go outside and check on um, on the two guys out there that are doing some uh, shovel work for me. Uh, so we'll see you in just a few minutes outside. Okay, everybody. Ricky and Romero did a great job. It's just uh, 30 minutes later, or so and they've already got this hole dug for us here. So we're on the back section of the house. Uh, where we believe there was some type of structural slab poured in the 60s or so. And the big benefit of doing this, as you can see in the video, hopefully you can get in there, is uh, we're able to dig all the way down until the concrete stops. And then we had the guys put a couple shovels uh, back so we can get a couple six inches or so exposed to the bottom side of that slab. And uh, so we've got the structural engineer coming out tomorrow. And um, he's going to take some depth measurements on that. We don't believe that there's any rebar or... Um, uh, or structural steel in this slab. It looks like there was some mesh used um, when they poured it and that's it, which is really not a structural thing. Um, so uh, Richard Lovano from uh, Steinman Lovano Structures is coming out to the house tomorrow 
and uh, we'll see what he has to say. But after just a few minutes of some investigative work, we've really got a pretty good hand on what's happening in the house. So if you're doing a similar remodel uh, and you're going to call a structural engineer out, you may consider doing some of these things ahead of time, doing a little investigation so that you'll save the uh, engineer making two trips out to the job site. So now when the engineer comes here tomorrow and I meet with him along with the architect, we'll kind of know what's happening in the structure ahead of time and he'll have a, a pretty good idea of what it's going to take to either fix this or whether we'll need to start new on some of this. So thanks for joining me and uh, be sure to get a good architect and a good engineer and a good builder involved in your project early so you can find some of these questions out ahead of time because certainly the structure is uh, a big expense of uh, any remodel or new construction project you're doing. Have a good day everybody. We'll talk to you soon.